I've been using Apple computers for about 20 years now, and there's a few things I do every time I set up a Mac. You might notice, that, I mean, this is, not, this is not a new Mac, I'm not setting up anything new here, but this could be helpful to you whether you got a new computer or you just wanna optimize the one you're using now. When you set up your computer for the first time, something that's on by default that I think is a terrible idea is the automatic iCloud syncing of your documents and especially your desktop folder. Let's turn that off. If you're using the latest version of macOS, I'm in Catalina. You're gonna find that in Apple ID, iCloud Drive, click Options. And right here, you're gonna turn off Desktop and Documents folder. The reason I do this is macOS tries to be intelligent about how it manages your files, and that means that sometimes a big file on your desktop isn't actually on your desktop, it's in the cloud. So if you're not on the internet, you can't access it. And actually, I just demonstrated this perfectly. As I switched it on and off, it went and moved all my files to iCloud. For file syncing, I use Dropbox. It doesn't really matter what you use as long as you are in control of where your files are. So let's assume you're setting up a new computer. One of the first things you should do is check for software updates. Even if you bought it brand new from the Apple Store, it may not be completely up to date. So just check before you start arranging everything. Next, let's organize our doc. One thing I appreciate from Apple is they bundle in some very powerful software software without having bloatware. But if you don't use a piece of software more than at least like once a week, just remove it. The less stuff in the dock, the better. If you removed an app that you really want, just press command spacebar, start searching for it, and it'll always be there. Spotlight is your friend. I realize a lot of people have strong opinions about the placement of the dock, but if you're on a laptop screen, the bottom is the wrong place. It takes up way too much real estate. I appreciate my monitor space too much, so I keep mine on the right. The only thing that really matters whether you put it on the right or the left is if you have external displays, make sure that you can always access your dock easily. And I also turn hiding on if I don't have an external display. You can quickly press Command Option D to hide and show the dock at any time. Also, if you click and drag on this little line, you can change the size of it. I like to keep it small-ish. A quick one I use to keep my desktop organized is Stacks. So you can see if I click this, there's actually a lot more on my desktop than you may have thought at first. So to do that, you just go to View, Use Stacks, and oh man, I'm not as organized as I thought, so let's just use Stacks again. And it combines all the similar files on your desktop together so you don't have to organize them manually. Another thing I always do in the Finder is I go to View and Show Path Bar and also Show Status Bar, and these are right below your standard Finder windows. They both show you exactly where a file is located. You can see the path. So when you're deep inside a folder, you can always track it back and see where it is. And the status bar is an old school part of macOS. It lets you see how much space is available on your hard drive and how many items you have selected in the current folder. A detail that's really important to me and you may not even have noticed is that by default, scroll bars are hidden until you start scrolling. I think this is a usability mistake because you don't have a sense of how far down you are in a window. So I go to general in the system preferences, show scroll bars and always. And now you can visually get a representation of how many items are in a window by the size of the scroll bar. This one's personal, but I couldn't live without tap to click. I always have that on because a lot of the time I don't want to press my finger down all the way. If you've got an Apple Watch, go into security and privacy and let your Apple Watch unlock your computer. It's just as safe as a password or fingerprint, but way more convenient. By default, your battery indicator doesn't show percentage, which I like to have, so I turn on show percentage. For any kind of file on your computer, like an image, video, audio, the operating system is gonna try to find a default app to open it with, but it's usually wrong. Bless it for trying, but I like my audio files to open in Audition, so I go to Git Info, and down here, there's an open with preference and you can choose whatever you want to open it with. Maybe I wanted QuickTime and I could click change all. And now every file that is a .wav file is gonna open up in QuickTime. But I like my waves to open audition, so I'll click change all again. And images are specific to their file type. So if I have a raw file, I could have that open up in Capture One. And I could have my PSDs open in Photoshop. One of the big reasons I prefer Macs over PCs is that they generally don't need a lot of maintenance, but sometimes they can still get kind of clogged up. And today's sponsor can help you out. It's Clean My Mac X, now available in the App Store. Whether you've got big files hiding on your drive that are taking up too much space, or maybe you visited a site that installed some malware on your computer, either way, Clean My Mac X is there to help. In 12 years, Clean My Mac X has transformed from a simple Mac cleaning app to a powerful all-in-one solution loved by thousands of users. Recently, it was released in the Mac App Store, which is further proof that the app is legitimate and safe for your MacBook. And if you're concerned at all about automatic optimization, changing things you don't want it to, 
Don't worry, you have full control over what Clean My Mac is doing. It scans deep into your files and lets you know about the tons of hidden junk that you can safely remove. It doesn't touch any of your essential files while it scans your computer for any sort of adware or malware or anything else that shouldn't be running in the background. It's also got this helpful space lens feature, which basically gives you an overview of where things are on your hard drive. Right now, my hard drive is too full. And with a little bit of clicking around, I can track down what are the giant folders that I could try to thin down and delete. Oh, I got a lot of pictures on here. I can move those to an external drive. Same with these movies. I know they're projects. I just need to back up externally. Now's the time to go check it out. Like I said, it's in the App Store. So if you click on the link in the description below, they'll know you came from this video and you'll have it available on any computer that uses that Apple ID. Once again, thanks to Clean My Mac X, they've been keeping my computer safe for many years now. Here's an exercise I'm glad I did a while ago. Don't rely on videos like this to tell you how to set up your computer. Make a list of your own. These are all the apps and the settings that I change every time I set up a new Mac because it's hard to remember them. And if you're wondering, should I set up a Mac as a new computer or import everything from my previous computer? It's not an easy decision. I've had issues both ways, but these days I generally set up each Mac as a completely new computer. File migration works well for a lot of people a lot of the time, but I have had issues with it. And it's just nice to have a totally clean slate where you know what's going on. The very first things I install just to get things going are a password manager. So in my case, I've been using 1Password a lot lately. Although LastPass also works, I should do a head-to-head -head comparison someday. Dropbox, which is the backbone of how we pass files around. I'd also recommend installing Chrome, not because it should be your primary browser, but it is worth having because there's some programs that just work better in it. For example, YouTube. But honestly, Safari is way more battery efficient. Chrome is a RAM hog and will slow down your whole machine. And then I install Setapp, which is kind of like installing dozens of other apps because there's a lot of stuff I just use in here all the time and I just pay a subscription to have access to them. So a big one is Bartender. And actually, Bartender is running all the time. If you look up here in my menu bar, you'll notice there's not a lot of stuff going on. I'm actually gonna go into my preferences and hide even more of it. For example, my screen recorder. We don't need to see that right now. If I say hide, then it's only visible when I click these three dots. Honestly, my computer feels like a mess if I don't have Bartender installed. Another favorite is Screens. This allows me to access my computer from other computers, so especially the iMac here at the studio. I can reach it from my laptop and it's connected to other drives and stuff like that. Now, in terms of software, we run a photo and video production company, so a lot of this is creative stuff. I'm just gonna go through my doc Real quick, here's what I've installed. For photography, Photoshop is right near the top, along with Lightroom, and also Capture One. I'm kind of moving back and forth between the two. A lot of things drive me crazy about Lightroom lately. For editing my podcast, I use Adobe Audition, and I've actually been thinking about trying Logic because there's a 90-day free trial right now. A lot of apps have free trials these days, so it's a good time to experiment. A little tool that helps a lot with podcast is Forecast. And by the way, go to stallmanpodcast.com and subscribe today because it's a good show. I talk to other YouTubers and podcasters about Apple and creative production, video, photo, all that stuff. DaVinci Resolve, I specifically use this to grade my raw footage. So this is before and this is after. And Resolve is free, by the way, so go experiment with it. Final Cut Pro, that's where I do all of my editing. And, oh, I forgot to remove Mail. I don't actually use the Mail app. <laughs> I could go on and on, but those are the most important things. I'd love to know what are the first things you change in any of your preferences when you set up a Mac? What did I forget? Put that in the comments below. Click the link in the description because Clean My Mac is a fantastic sponsor. And I'll see you guys in the next video.